Hi, it's Lerald, and in this video I'm going to talk about how to level through the War Within with a particular focus on doing things quickly. So be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy this video and you want to see more like it. Now obviously it's up to you how much effort you want to put into going fast, but since you're here, you probably do want to go fast. I'm sure there will be at least one comment complaining about how the video that has fast in the title is about going fast and how streamers ruin the game. Too bad, you're right, I make the game and I make it bad on purpose. So just as a kind of overview, Blizzard has made leveling in this expansion very fast. My channel manager Sunset and I leveled our first characters in just a little over eight real life hours. We were in no huge hurry throughout the process either. We usually spend a ton of time practicing and preparing on the beta, but we've been busy and that just, we didn't have the time to do it this time around. We went in blind and it was fine. We took several breaks while leveling, including a full hour and change in which we stopped to eat sandwiches and talk about video ideas and different types of bread. We generally had a pretty good chill time throughout the whole leveling process. There were a lot of server stability issues and quests that we had to abandon and restart because quest progress kept breaking. But even with all of that, it was pretty light work. The whole experience was smooth and easy from start to finish, with no huge complaints. This is one of the smoother starting experiences that we've had, definitely a big step up from the last several expansions. I think if you rush through leveling your first character, even if you're not practiced, if you're just fairly quick about it and you don't really take any breaks, it would probably take you about six hours. Maybe a little more, maybe a little less, it's up to you, but that seems pretty easily attainable to me. There's also some very weird, but good scaling going on in this expansion. In the past, player power felt very low while leveling, but in The War Within, I feel extremely strong throughout the entire process. Even at higher levels where gear starts to fall off and I do feel a bit weaker, I still feel pretty strong, especially compared to Shadowlands, Dragonflight, Battle for Azeroth, you, know, you name a previous expansion, I feel a lot stronger in The War Within while leveling than I did in those previous ones. Hero talents are doing a lot of heavy lifting throughout the leveling process. They're pretty great. I'm a big fan. I genuinely think this might be my favorite leveling experience in any expansion ever. The experience of leveling alts has definitely been number one. Now, Blizzard has added some fantastic quality of life in this expansion to really drive home the concept of warbands as a big new defining feature of the future of Warcraft. So first off, reputation gains are account wide, so reputation uh, rewards are only applied to the first character doing them. This is good, it means you don't have to do the same quest over and over again on all of your alts. You just hit the quest up one time and now you're done. You can still do it on alts, it's just not necessary. Also, the reputation gains from quests are much larger on average than they were in the past. We're talking about 500 reputation from doing a quest the first time instead of 50 on every single character. So this is more reward for less work. Excellent. Second, you have the Warband Bank. So any items that you have can be very easily shared between characters on your account just by depositing them into the bank. This can be good for sharing gold, crafting materials, food and buff items, and even gear for your alts. This all goes cross realm too, so just there's really a lot of quality of life here. Third, and I've saved the best for last here, you get a 5% XP bonus for your entire account each time you level a character to 80. This stacks up to five times for a 25% total XP bonus. It's permanent, it's account wide, and it even applies outside of the new zones. I logged onto an old character I hadn't touched in over a decade just to double check this and I immediately disconnected. So I made a brand new character and it works even at level one. The XP bonus is there. This is brilliant. This is basically the old heirloom bonus that people have been wanting back for a long time. You just level some alts and now you'll be zooming forever. Now I want to talk about some character prep stuff you can do to really make the process a little bit faster and smoother. This is all optional, but I do think it's a good idea if you're trying to go fast. First off, enchants. I would say the main point of emphasis here is speed on your boots, cloak, and bracers. You can enchant all of your gear, that's fine, but the main thing is you run around a lot while leveling, and running faster is the most important aspect of leveling quickly. This is something that gets overlooked a lot, but it really is that simple. If you move faster, you will level faster. You can use dragonflight enchants, they are not bad and they are very cheap now. I think Homebound Speed, that's the Dragonflight enchant for cloaks, is actually better in terms of the price to performance than the new The War Within cloak enchants as well. 
You can use other enchants such as weapon enchants and ring enchants to make your character stronger, and I think having a handful of enchant scrolls in your bags to be prepared just in case you get an item upgrade is a good idea. Then once you're done leveling that character, you just shove them all into your warband bank and then they'll be ready for your next alt. Now there's also a lot of food, flask, and potion options available, and they're all pretty good. I've been using Dreamwalker's healing potions and elemental potions of power, and Files of Tepid Versatility. These are all potions and flasks from Dragonflight, so they're very cheap and they're all still pretty good. I wouldn't break the bank on any of this stuff, but anything this cheap will work. There are also some new, very cheap foods available in The War Within, and I would recommend using those on your alts or even your mains. There are strength, agility, and intellect-based stat foods. That's meat and potatoes for strength, rib stickers for agility, and sweet and sour meatballs for int. These aren't the strongest foods available, but they are very cheap. They cost maybe 5 to 10 gold apiece, and they give a lot of stat budget and they last for an hour. You can craft them yourself if you level up cooking on one of your characters, or you can just buy them off the auction house super, super easy. Even if you are incredibly broke, you can still afford to spend 10 gold per hour on a food buff. Now I want to talk about War Mode. War Mode turns on World PvP, you can turn it on in Orgrimmar Stormwind, and then in Valdraken or Dornagal. While War Mode is active, obviously you have World PvP on, you also get a 10% XP bonus, you activate War Mode talents, and those can vary based on your spec. They can be anywhere from insanely powerful to insanely worthless. Now should you turn on War Mode? Normally for leveling up to 70, I would say yes, 100% of the time, always turn it on. In a new expansion, in this new expansion, leveling up to 80, I would say yes for Alliance and no for Horde. Horde turn on War Mode to get the XP bonus, Alliance turn on War Mode to get revenge. If you turn on War Mode as a Horde player, your chances of having a bad time increase substantially. There are always groups of Alliance players hunting down Horde players. The opposite is not always true. However, because the expansion has been out for several days and there are lots of players at level 80 with hate in their hearts, hate that was probably put there by an alliance gank squad, I would recommend not leveling with war mode on as either faction unless you are willing to accept that you might get camped. Ultimately it's up to you and turning off war mode is as simple as finding an end and clicking a button, so do what you like, but we did turn war mode off about halfway through the ringing deeps and we had no regrets. I think we found that the servers were more stable with War Mode off as well, whether that was real or coincidence, I don't know. But either way, just not having the distraction of stopping and PvPing all the time was definitely an improvement in our leveling speed. Alright, now let's talk about leveling your first character. You will need to complete the campaign in order to unlock World Quests and Adventure Mode on your alts, so this should be your number one priority on your first character. You're going to level by questing, everyone does it, and you will too. If you just bum rush the campaign and do nothing else at all, you will end up around level 76 or 77, with tons of side quests left to do before you hit level 80. So because of that, I recommend stopping and smelling the roses a bit along the way. Side quests can be very lucrative in terms of XP, so there is a real incentive to do a large chunk of them. There's also some pretty good quest stacking in some of the zones. We did all of the side quests on the Isle of Dorne before moving on to the Ringing Deeps, and we were very close to level 76 by the time we were done with the zone. We did about half the side quests in the Ring of Deeps, which had a lot of latency issues, and we just wound up audibling to rushing the campaign the rest of the way so we could get out of the zone as quickly as we could. We continued that same approach all the way through to the end. We just rushed the campaign from about halfway through the Ring of Deeps all the way to the very end of Ashkahet, and we ended the campaign at level 79, exactly one bar away from level 80. Pretty close to perfect. Two world quests later and we were level 80, not bad. With the benefit of hindsight, I think that doing Isle of Dorne and doing all the side quests there is the best approach. I would recommend doing that on your first pass through. After that, I would move through the Ringing Deeps pretty much as quickly as you can and then stop and do side quests in Hallowfall with the goal of finishing the zone at level 79. From there, I would move into Ashkahet and finish up the campaign and that should put you right around level 80 when you do. If you're not quite level 80 at that point, do a couple of world quests, or maybe go back and hit a couple of side quests up, and you're good to go. Now I want to talk about alts, and that's where the speed really kicks into play. Dungeons are the number one way to level alts right now. 
You can get anywhere from one third to two thirds of a level in every dungeon you run, and the four leveling dungeons that are available in the War Within are all very fast. They take less than 10 minutes each, even if one person in the group has halfway decent damage, and this means you can level from 70 to 80 in around three hours. I have several friends who have said they've done it in less time than that, especially when they were playing in full organized guild groups. This was consistent with our experience too. We leveled our first pair of alts in a little under four hours while playing two of our worst geared characters and doing dungeons at like three in the morning. As of the time of recording this, just a few hours ago, last night by the time this video will be out, we finished leveling one set of characters that we had stopped off at level 78 and then leveled through a full other set of characters in a stream, just a single setting stream that we did that took about four, four and a half hours. We did like 125% of a set of characters in about four and a half hours. So pretty good considering the whole time we were playing with pugs and also streaming and talking and, you know, taking a little break here and there. Now, most of the dungeons are three boss dungeons, and the one that isn't has very little trash. With the exception of Priory of the Sacred Flame, I mostly just try to rush through the dungeons as quickly as I can. Priory is kind of special. It has tons of enemies in it, so I try to make several mass pulls to get a bunch of bonus XP at the start of the dungeon. You can get about an extra 15, 10 to 15% of a level every time you run Priory if you really go nuts pulling everything in. Because of this, it is the best dungeon, but it's not so good that you should specifically queue for it. The random dungeon XP bonus at the end of completing any of the dungeons is worth the risk even of getting the spider dungeon, which is not so great. Now, in terms of running dungeons quickly, being a tank helps, having a healer helps. If your class can tank, you should. If you can heal, you should. These will both help with queue times and give you, especially being a tank, a little more control over how quickly the group moves. A big advantage of the weird scaling going on in this expansion is that having low level characters in your groups is actually helpful to an amazing degree. Low level players, level 70s, will demolish enemies. Even a badly geared level 70 or 71 can two shot packs of enemies. I have no complaints about this. I am not complaining about it. I don't want it changed. I am just noting it. I think it's great. The general community opinion is that this falls off at level 75. I think the drop off in damage is a little bit more noticeable at like level 77, but either way, there is a loss of damage as you approach level 80. So I would recommend just pugging and rotating in new players to keep fishing for lobbies who can carry you with their weird but insanely good scaling, unless you have a full committed group of friends who are going to play together. Now, as I said, we pugged dungeons in the middle of the night as a healer and tank, and we actually had to wait for DPS every single time, so I do think DPS queues are not that bad. This is good, it can change, but logging in and checking it as I was writing the script, DPS queues are, have only been like two or three minutes. That's pretty short. If you are queuing and there is any sort of a delay on your queues, you can just do quests while you wait, and that is the fastest possible way to level kind of bouncing back and forth between questing and dungeons. Now, I think it's a good idea to have some alternatives to doing dungeons just in case you don't like them, or if Blizzard decides that fun has been detected and they have to nerf dungeon XP now, or maybe they decide to buff some of the other methods of leveling to be more competitive, which would also be great. It's just good to have options. So let's start with Delves. There's a lot of good stuff about Delves. They're fast, they're fun, they're easy, they're breezy, they're a nice little experience and something you can do solo. There's really only one problem. The XP gains are terrible. We tried running some delves and found that they gave about 5% of a level per delve. This doesn't sound bad, except that the average delve kind of takes about half as long as the dungeon, and those give anywhere from five to 15 times more XP per run. Not great. This also gets worse when you play around with delves and realize that they're not all created equal. Some delves are long. They might be longer than a fast dungeon but the XP is still one-fifth to one-fifteenth of that of a dungeon. This should be a priority for Blizzard to fix. I want delve leveling to be competitive, but at this point, I don't feel that it is. All right, next option, questing. The XP is decent. It's fine. It's straight up not bad, and it is fun to quest out in the world. I like it a lot. It's a good deal faster than it has been in the past several expansions. It's good, but it's not insane, and dungeons are insane. Now, if dungeons get nerfed, I think this is the way to go. You just want to do quest lines that you like across various zones, or maybe you can fill in some of the quest lines that you haven't done. 
In terms of the zone order I would go for, I would prefer Isle of Dorne in terms of quest to the other three zones. I would start there, I think it's the best by far. After that, I think Hallowfall is number two. It's a beautiful zone and there are some great quests there, but there's a ton of time spent flying around and up and down, so I do think it is slower than Dorne. Third, if you're not level 80 after doing those two zones, I would go to Aj Kahet. We both really liked the characters in this zone. The storytelling is very good here. As for the questing, I don't like it as much as Dorne and Hallowfall, but there is still some really decent quest stacking here. There are also a lot of dangerous elites though, so that is what I would watch out for while I'm in Ashkahet. And then I would finish up with the Ringing Deeps, and the reason for that is that we experienced, as I said before, a lot of performance issues and broken quests in this zone. I think if the Ringing Deeps were working correctly, that it's a good zone and I would do it ahead of Ashkahet. It would get a solid third place finish from me. It's not bad, but the technical issues plaguing the zone push it down. If they're fixed, and hopefully by the time you're watching this they are, then I would say it's pretty good and I would go there instead. And finally there's crafting. The first time you craft a new recipe you gain a big chunk of XP, about 6% of a level. There is a cap on this. In Dragonflight it was eventually brought down to only half of a level. I assume it's still at that point, but I haven't tested the limits on this to be sure. As for how much you want to use this, that's really going to depend on your professions and how much gold you're willing to spend, and, and I didn't really want to spend a ton of gold on it, but it's an option. I don't really have a lot more to say about it though. You can do some crafts, first crafts will give you some XP, that exists. Yup. In conclusion, we really like what Blizzard is doing with leveling in the War Within. It's fast, it's simple, and it encourages you to play alts. These are all the things we have wanted in WoW for years, and we are really happy with them. Sometimes you just have to give the people what they want. So as for our review of the War Within's leveling experience, we give it a solid 9 out of 10. We're having a good time. Now there were three areas that we felt could be improved. Number one was server stability. Lag is always annoying in the moment, but with the benefit of a couple of days of hindsight, I can comfortably say this expansion's lag was not nearly as bad as it was in the last three expansions. With that being said, it was still frustrating, and there was a lot of it, especially in the Ringing Deeps. That zone has remained laggy, even up to the point of making this video. Number two was broken quests. There were a lot of quests that just simply would not work correctly, and the fix for them was either to log out and back in, or to abandon and restart them. Neither of those is fun. To some extent, that always happens, but there were noticeably more in this expansion than in the previous ones. This is an issue that really stood out to us. And then finally, there were what I would call poorly tuned quests. In the same vein, there were a lot of quests that required sitting around and waiting for respawns. This wasn't because huge number of players were camping the objective. Exactly the opposite. Sometimes we would be the only people in the quest area, but you might need to kill, for example, six kobolds, and the area would only have six kobold spawns. So if somebody in the last five minutes had come through and killed one kobold, you now have to sit and wait for one to respawn. This was an inconvenience that haunted us across all four zones. Now these are all issues that can be fixed, and some of them will just naturally clear up over time as the servers are under less strain. Even with those critiques, this expansion is off to a really good launch, easily the best in years, and we are both really happy with it. Alright, that's it. Thanks to everyone who supports our channel, thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Have fun slamming dungeons. Bye.